What's up everyone, Chris here. It's been a while, but today we are back with another video checking out two major bike brands, big bikes which sell a lot. This is the Norco Fluid Hardtail Series versus the Trek Roscoe Series. Both are very, very popular bikes and over the years have got even more aggressive, even more trail ready. They've really changed what an entry level hardtail can be in a mountain biking world. Long gone are the days of a very awkward fitting geometry or that entry entry level geometry. They're now sticking closer to what the full suspension trail bikes would have been and now they're going to be able to handle so much more. As you may have seen, the Trek Roscoe's have drastically improved. They, and we're talking about the 7, 8, and 9 here, they have changed their geometry completely. They are very low, very long, very slack. We're not talking about an enduro bike here, but they're very similar to what the Fuel EX range would have been. And this is their go-to bike. This is their go-to do-everything king of the mountain bike. The Norco Fluid has been around a little bit longer and hasn't changed as drastically through the years. Now this still comes with a more updated pre progressive geometry, but they haven't gone as far as matching say their optic style of fit or their sight. It is still a little bit held back. It is still a little more friendly. This is gonna give it a bit better single track handling. You're gonna be able to be really twitchy and kind of cross over with that XC, but they do pair them with a very beefy tire setup to begin with. The suspension on all the Norco fluids is relatively good. Norco, though, has not made a very high-end level of this. They're tapping out around the $1,800 mark, whereas the Trex now with the Roscoe 9, which has been a hugely popular bike, is all the way up double that price at $3,400. It makes sense. The part spec is drastically different. I mean, it's kind of crazy how much different it is, but the Fluid is still an honestly good bike. Where the Roscoe ends is really where the Fluid, I think, shines. So hear me out here. The Trek Roscoe really ends at the entry level side at the Roscoe 7. Then they have the Roscoe 6. Now the Roscoe 6 is a very different bike still good trail bike but it comes with those plus size wheels 27 and a half inch rims and a more not as aggressive geometry whereas the fluid i think is a little bit more slacked out a little bit more towards the newer roscoe styling so you're going to get a bit of that but they have those 29s by 2.4 2.6 ish style tires so you're going to have a lot more flow and a lot more rollover it's going to be this nice in-between. And the pricing works out just perfect. It's literally as if Trek looked at what was out there and decided not to compete. So they go from about $1,400, which is about the entry-level-ish start of the fluids. And then they jump up to $2,000 with a relatively new, radically designed Roscoe 7. Below that is the Norco Fluid. And it's almost as if they just left this room in that $1,500 to $1,800 range for the Norcos to exist, for other entry-level brands to exist. And then Trek wanted to take back the King of the Trail title, essentially, for the hardtails. It's been a long time since Trek made a bike, which is really king of the off-road free ride trails in a hardtail version. The Fuely X has always been well-reviewed. It's always a good, well-rounded bike. And that's what they've done with the Roscoe. They've turned it into the Fuliax, king of everything. You can take it anywhere. You can do anything with it. Leaving Norco on the sidelines in this great entry-level setup. I mean, I say entry-level lots, but you can really do a lot with these bikes. The suspension is top-notch. They're still way better and more upgradable than other bikes like a Storm or a Marlin. You're still getting tapered head tubes, higher quality aluminum. Everything about these bikes is going to ride so much better. Obviously, all of them come with that newer one by style drivetrain. The point is, you can't really go wrong. You can start at the Roscoe 6 or a lower end Norco Fluid. Or you can jump up to these nice new Norco Fluid HT1s with an excellent part spec and really good pricing. 
with a relatively good geometry for downhill, an excellent geometry for single track and XC. It is designed for everything. With very little tweaks, you could make it a super fast rolling kind of baby revolver. You could make it a little bit faster by switching out the tires and just putting on a few lighter weight parts for a faster XC. But single track wise, like I'm doing here, it's gonna shred really, really well. The Roscoe's are obviously going to be a little better in that downhilly enduro style of things, and maybe in the throwing it around, you know, doing the whips and stuff, just with that so relaxed geometry. But the Norco Fluids are honestly a really good setup bike. It's definitely hard to say which would be the better choice between a Roscoe 6 and, say, a Norco Fluid HT2. They're both going to be excellent, excellent options. They're both going to handle a very wide variety of terrain they both have upgradability you can put 29s on the roscoe obviously some of these upgrades might not make sense if you're looking for 29s why not just get the fluid it comes with them it's going to roll fast the part specs are very similar if you're pushing up to a two thousand dollar range that's where it gets really serious and that's where it gets a little more tricky to know part spec wise the roscoe is very well specced. Everything to do with it checks every box of every mountain biker's dream bike, you know, except for full suspension. The fluid definitely cuts a teeny bit of that away, but it's it's really not much. They have the one by, they have the wide range, they have a really good suspension. It's not as good, but is it noticeable at a two hundred dollar price difference? Are the brakes noticeable in a $200 price difference? I don't think so. I think you're really getting a good value when you get the fluid. Unless you're hunting down, downhill terrain, the Norco Fluid is going to be a faster handling single track bike. And that's just a fact. You know, a longer slacker bike only handles so well. You have a lot more roundness to the bike when cornering. Whereas a little steeper of a head tube angle still keeps that twitchiness. So you're still able to throw it around. You're still able to get up and do stuff with it. But it's a really tough thing to explain, really. It's hard to see. It's hard to explain. Head tube angles, seat tube angles do make a big difference. And the Roscoe 7 and up is going to be that much easier to roll over things and point your bike downwards. Whereas the Fluid... Wheels on the ground is going to be a faster, aggressive bike. Tires, yeah, minor difference between those two models. A little bit wider, but it's not huge. You're going to be adjusted tire pressures. Nobody's going to have it perfect. If you're looking for a well-priced, very capable single-track bike, the Norco Fluid may be the exact thing you're looking for to keep under the $2,000 limit. And especially if we're looking in U.S. prices, everything's going to be a little bit less in that. And it becomes way more aggressive sounding. You know, you're probably closer to $1,500 in Norco Fluid. So to get that kind of part spec for that much money is really impressive. The Trek is still probably close to two grand with tax. Anyway, hopefully this video helped you. It is a bit confusing, but it's honestly a nice lineup. Um, I really think the Norcos have a really good spot where they're at. I would love to see a higher end fluid. Hopefully they come out with something. They are missing that higher end hardtail, which many people are coming out, even people like Nuke Proof. All right, guys. Well, hopefully this helped. Hopefully this video was entertaining. That is just another one of my rides I do. Hopefully we'll get a lot more this year in. I am doing some bike changes up this year, which might surprise you. So put down in the comments below if you made it this far, what you think I'm getting and how much it's going to cost and how long I might have to wait. Honestly, if you need a bike, I'd go in and buy one now because it's kind of getting crazy out there. Good luck and thanks for watching.